This week we've got some sounding of the alarms. <laughs> Some of Mara Jade's patented charm. And the boy from a moisture farm. All to come in chapter 23 of Dark Force Rising. Hello there, I'm Darren. And I'm Kat. And welcome to the real sequels, a series of events that happened after episode 6 in the books, novels, and sometimes comics in the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Today we're opening with chapter 23 of Dark Force Rising. We open chapter 23 with Luke, Mara, and Card attempting to make their escape on the turbo lifts from last week. Just then, as the wheel of the alarm rang overhead, the turbo lift came to an abrupt stop. The two gunners, who had recently replaced the tech crew in the last chapter, are busy complaining about the sudden interruption to their day by the snap drill sounding in their turbo car. Yeah, yeah what does he expect? Some burning pirate gang or something? <laughs> are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! One implies that they are more frequent now that Thrawn has taken over, as he pulls out his ID and walks over to the scanner. Meanwhile, our trio is watching a debate unfold between the two. Luke turns to Card and tries to figure out what their next step should be, but realizes that Mara has them both knocked out with a quick neck snap before either could say anything. Fatality! <laughs> <laughs> Mara tells Luke and Card to get a move on. They don't have much time. They need to get to a terminal before the turbolift car reports a discrepancy and the stormtroopers make an appearance. Luke whips out his lightsaber and cuts an exit in the door. Our trio squeeze into the turbolift tunnel. Mara in the lead. They head towards the access tunnel. They follow the tunnel past an array of deactivated maintenance droids and find a terminal room. Luke catches up to Mara, standing in front of the terminal, looking shocked. She states that they haven't just put the main computer on standby, or bypassed it. They've completely shut it down. It's a bold move, Cotton. <laughs> Card states that he suspects Thrawn knows where they are, and he knows Mara can get into the computer. He suggests that they keep moving, and asks if Mara knows where they are. Mara states that she thinks they're above the hangar base, Card suggests that they should grab a ship from the vehicle deep storage area. That's a nice check off Millennium Falcon. Be a shame if someone used it. <laughs> exactly. They shouldn't be far from the deep storage area. Thrawn would expect them to go directly to one of the hangar bays, but maybe not if they come in via the vehicle lift from the deep storage. Mara dislikes the idea, which starts an argument between the two. As if Thrawn is expecting it, then it could possibly be a trap with no exit. Luke cuts them off as his Jedi combat senses are tingling. Spidey senses. <laughs> Someone is coming, and they begin to hide. Mara behind the terminal, blaster ready. Luke flat against the wall behind the door, and Card, still weaponless, runs to hide in the tunnel where the decommissioned droids are. As two stormtroopers enter the room, suddenly, a floodlight comes on from Card's tunnel, with the sound of metal grinding against metal. The stormtroopers step into the room in response to this, waving their blasters as they go, followed by two black-clad naval troopers. The stormtroopers spot Mara, but Mara of course was faster, her blaster letting off four <coughs> shots, two per stormtrooper. One shot came back, a useless death reflex that goes far too wide. The naval troopers tried to duck for cover, too late, as one wide swing from Luke's lightsaber takes them out. With the all clear, they head off. Mara giving Card a blaster, finally, while stating that his diversion was effective. With no other plans, the deep storage was a destination. You better be right about this, says Mara. Apologies in advance if I'm not, says Card. We then switch to the command center of the Chimera. A stormtrooper giving a report to Pelion. No sign of them in the detention area, and one of the waste chutes has been cut open. Pelion, however, is not interested in the how, but more the where. They need to locate the three. Everything else can wait until later. Thrawn, however, turns to his communications officer and demands they find out how the shoot was cut. He also tells them to warn the men of a man spotted in a fighter pilot's uniform in the area. This sparks a quarrel between Thrawn and Pelion. Pelion wanted to focus solely on finding them rather than how they broke Card out. Thrawn, however, asks Pelion to indulge him for a moment. 
Just then, a Stormtrooper commander interrupted with information about the dead search team 207. Two killed by blaster fire and two killed by something else. Thrawn instructed them to check for partial cauterization in the bodies, a request that dumbfounded the alien. Of course. Of, of course. Of course. <laughs> then, with a cold fire in his eyes, Thrawn continued, and tell them that one of the intruders is Jedi Luke Skywalker. Once Thrawn was done, Pelion says that to be impossible. Skywalker is on Jomark with Sabaoth. Was, replied Thrawn, as he calls Rook from over his shoulder. He commands the grey-skinned alien to get a squad of non-combat personnel to place Yasil Miri around the hangar bay, hoping to hinder Skywalker's abilities as much as possible. Pelion begins to suggest using the ones from the bridge. And Thrawn's like, shut up! <laughs> 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 yeah, and he needs a second to think. And in that second, he sets out commands around the turbo lifts that will herd our trio towards the hangar base where Thrawn has the Yasselberry trap. However, trying to see his opponent's moves, he guesses where they may be headed instead. Pelion says that perhaps the AFT hangar base for one of the assault shuttles. Thrawn, Thrawn agrees slowly. That would make sense if Skywalker was leading. But if Card was leading, then he fell silent, as if in the deep thought. Pelion takes the liberty and orders extra men around the shuttles and inside, as it was just somewhere to start. Thrawn interrupts, however, still thinking out loud, that if Card is leading, then he'll try something less obvious. And then it clicks. The Falcon. Where is it? Pelion tries to locate it on the computer, as he had tried to do so much since the computer systems had taken down. Obviously, however, there was no such use. He instead jabbed a finger at a stormtrooper commander and told him to find the location of the ship and get a squad there. We have them, Captain, says Thrawn coldly. We then switch back to Card, Mara and Luke in the deep storage bay. Luckily, no one was around. They had beaten the search party there. If they're coming, said Luke hopefully. But they are coming, interrupted Mara with respect for Thrawn's predictions. Card takes a quick scan of the area, mostly intelligence ships. Any would really do as an escape vessel. They decided to get a move on, hearing the whistles of a turbo lift on its way. As they headed towards the bay's computer terminal, Luke spotted it. It couldn't be, but it was. The Millennium Falcon. Mara then stated that she'd forgotten that they'd taken it aboard when she met Thrawn at Endor, and that she got the impression it was found deserted. To Luke, this meant that wherever Leia and Chewie were, they were now stranded. Putting his lightsaber away, he sprints towards the ship. Mara hissed his name, but it was too late. As he got there, two men on a datapad lift came into view. He shouted to grab their attention, and they stopped. Luke tries to blag at them, saying that he was there to give them new orders for the Falcon to be moved and used as bait. The young one of the two replied that no such orders had came through yet, Luke, however, says that it just came through a moment ago on the main computer in the bay. The trooper he was with, now pointing the blaster at Luke, asked for ID. Luke, however, reached out with the force and pulled the blaster from his hand, then pushed it back around again until it struck the trooper in the stomach. Ha! No, watch your operating number, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Card and Mara then joined Luke offering reassurance to the young officer, telling him that they'll not hurt him as long as he locks himself and the now incapacitated trooper in the closet. The young officer nods and drags the trooper over to the closet. The three then get to work, Card starting the pre-flight setup on the Falcon, Mara working on something in the computer terminal, and Luke, um, just being Luke. Just then, a door across the bay slid open, revealing a full squad of eight stormtroopers heading straight for the Falcon. Luke had a sudden thought and spotted Mara crouching beside the computer terminal, hidden from view but not for long. Luke thought if only there were a way to tell her not to fire yet. And maybe there was. Luke reached out through the force, picturing himself in Mara's mind, and said, wait until I give you the word before you attack. There was no reply, but he saw her throw a look at the Falcon in response. Luke now exiting the Falcon tells Card to remain on the ship. Luke feels four stormtroopers entering the Falcon and four underneath. The time was right. Now, he says in his mind to Mara, and within a few short seconds with a flurry of green light and red light, 
it was over. Luke now realised that the ship was moving the wrong way. We're meant to be going up, not down. <laughs> <laughs> Luke calls to Mara, who appears at the rim of the lift, five metres above him. Jump, he says, and she does with annoyance, but without hesitation. Luke slows her fall with the force, and she lands, and is inside the ship within three steps. The three now strapped in, were being taken down a narrow corridor. Look, says Mara, another lift plate was closing over a lighted opening. If that was indeed the exit, then... But before either could vocalise their thought, Card punched it. They shot off down the corridor, like a scalded tauntaun. Luke's slightly on the worried side, seeing the gap narrowing. He thought of the rancor at Jabba's palace. The force was with him now as it was then, but it still made him uneasy as they headed towards the near inevitable collision. However, with the scraping of metal, they made it. Down the corridor, and out through the hangar bay, and into the blackness of space. Now, however, being chased by TIE fighters, Card pulled some fancy flying with Luke on the dorsal gun. They outrun the TIEs and were heading straight to Coruscant. Helian stood and watched the ship tumbling through space, helpless to do anything due to the computer being off and the size of the Millennium Falcon and its distance from the ship making the Chimera's weapon systems and tractor beams useless. As the ship flickered away, Pelion prepared himself. Hmm. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I miss the Tash too. <laughs> he prepared himself for the worst that never came. Thrawn tells him to bring in the ties and bring the main computer back online and supply and unloading can resume. Pelion then says, yes, sir, as if Thrawn had missed the significance of what had just happened. However, Thrawn senses this and says, we've lost Orion, Captain. No more. Pelion outlines that Card will now definitely give the Katana fleet to the Rebellion. However, Thrawn's not worried. He thinks that due to the chaos they've set in Coruscant, that it will take Card some time to negotiate his terms. And at this point, they have information from Ferrier that may yet prove fruitful. He orders Pelion to set a course for the Pantolaman system. Now, it was a race. Nice. Yup. I don't know, though, like... I don't know, I just don't think, like, a generic tie will do Thrawn and think he needs a very fancy tie. Like, <laughs> Send I out the bow ties. <laughs> well, maybe a bow tie. I just don't know what kind of tie. It would need to be a very fancy one. Yeah, it's that a, that tie better have superpowers or yeah, something. It's essentially a cravat with a lot of dicky bows around it. Oh, nice. Mm. That is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well that's about all we've got time for this week give us a subscribe if we'd earned it don't forget to check out some of the videos at the end of this one and we'll see you all next time bye bye